Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing the background cosmic radiation, also known as CBR, also known as remnant radiation. Actually it has too many names to mention in this video, but I wanted to actually tell you a little bit more about it and explain why we think that because of this radiation that we detect everywhere, Big Bang most likely occurred at the specific time when we think it occurred. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So the story of CBR as it's known, or CMBR as it's known in some other places, um, basically started back in 1940s when the scientists, and specifically here we're talking about two scientists, one of them was uh, called Arno Penzias and one of them was called Robert Wilson, um, predicted that there may be something called background radiation. It took them um, pretty much close to about 20 years before they were able to kind of officially find it and prove it. and it took them, I guess, 30 years to receive a Nobel Prize for uh, this discovery, Nobel Prize in Physics. Um, now, interestingly, the idea behind it is really pretty brilliant. Now, let me, let me just talk to you about something that you might relate to in real life. Imagine right now you smelled smoke, like, I don't know, cigarette smoke or any kind of smoke. So if right now I smell cigarette smoke, I know that probably someone around me, most likely my neighbor next door, is smoking a cigarette and there's fire coming off the cigarette and it's creating what I can smell. Now, the fact that I can actually predict that there is a smoking cigarette based on a smell is kind of how we've discovered that Big Bang most likely happened. Okay, not exactly with the smoke though and not exactly with the smell. We were looking at essentially the universe itself. If you look into space right now, you'll notice that there's a lot of darkness. Now, it kind of doesn't make sense. And there's a lot of videos I made previously where I tried to even philosophize about why it doesn't make sense. But the most specific reason is that, well, there technically should be stars in every direction. But that's not really what we're seeing. We see a lot of darkness. Or do we? If you were to actually make uh, the space itself brighter and brighter and brighter, you would at some point start seeing um, radiation pretty much coming off everywhere, even though there's a lot of darkness everywhere. The radiation that I'm referring to is known as the background radiation. As a matter of fact, the background radiation is everywhere around us. It's coming off pretty much everything, everywhere. It's not exactly a visible light, you can't really see it without a powerful uh, radio telescope, but if you were to map it, which we have done, it would look something like this. This is a more detailed uh, image of the background radiation, um, and you can see that it's kind of patchy as well. There's some dark patches, there's some brighter patches, and that uh, actually in itself is enough to explain other phenomena, including things like dark matter and expansion of the universe, but that's another story. Basically, the idea here is that even though right there you can kind of see a lot of darkness, it's not really darkness. There's actually radio waves coming off that area and you can see them with the radio telescope. So the universe is actually not dark at all. The other thing that the scientists were able to kind of show is that um, well, because we now understand th um, that light with time and with distance actually redshifts, it basically uh, decreases in energy and increases in wavelength and basically becomes a different type of light. Um, we can actually use a little bit of math to try to estimate how the light changed over time and when it actually started changing. In other words, we can use the background radiation that we have today to try to estimate when the original light uh, started, what kind of light it was, and most importantly, when it occurred. In other words, we could actually estimate the age of the universe. Now today, the um, background radiation in terms of frequency and in terms of wavelength is somewhere right here. It's just um, over one millimeter in wavelength. Over time, it's actually going to decrease um, to the point where it's going to be practically invisible, but we are almost certain almost positive that it when it started it was actually a lot closer to um, most likely this part in other words it was actually um, really 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 warm type of light possibly even visible light uh, the type of light that you get from an object that's about 4000 to 5000 degrees in temperature so in other words it's redshifted this much 
And the best example of what uh, this early universe looked like is right here in our own sun. We think that the early universe, um, specifically about 300,000 years after the Big Bang, was basically all like this. It was all one gigantic plasma universe. At some point, though, it started cooling down, it started decreasing in temperature, and it reached the temperature when the actual subatomic particles could now combine into actual particles, such as protons and neutrons, and as soon as they started doing that, they started releasing a lot of light going everywhere. And this was the earliest light we had in the universe. This light traveled for 13.8 billion years across the universe, and some of it reached Earth, and basically some of it is now part of this picture you see right here. But this light, like I said before, was actually redshifted. It became much less energetic over time and um, turned into light that's basically somewhere right here on the microwave spectrum. And what's more is that uh, the background radiation is actually the reason why space itself is not zero degrees um, Kelvin. It's not absolute zero. The background radiation coming off pretty much everywhere, is technically heating up space to about 2.72 degrees Kelvin, uh, because it's still everywhere. It's still going to be everywhere for at least 100 billion years, and only in about 100 billion years will it actually finally disappear, making space very, very close to absolute zero. Now, um, interestingly, there's a lot of theories behind what might actually happen when this occurs, specifically in regards to us being able to create ridiculous computers that would be able to actually calculate everything even faster, and uh, some really insane quantum effects that will start occurring everywhere, but that's a story for another day. What is important to understand about cosmic radiation, though, is that it um, is definitely a fact, and it's definitely something that allows us to estimate not just the uh, actual presence of dark matter or that Big Bang occurred or when it occurred, but it allows us to understand how the universe will progress with time as well. Now, it doesn't mean that we understand everything about CBR. As a matter of fact, we still don't understand a lot of things. Like, for example, there's a lot of fluctuations in the actual map that don't seem to make any sense. Um, also, there are a lot of other distortions that are still completely unexplained as well, but um, hopefully with time we'll be able to find new um, scientific discoveries that will allow us to explain what's really going on um, out there in the darkness of the universe. But I guess for now, all you need to remember is that next time you look into the skies and you realize how dark it is, you need to remember that it's really not the dark at all. It just, you can't really see the light that it is being remitted. As a matter of fact, if we go back in time, billions and billions of years, the sky will actually be very, very bright and extremely hot. And that's exactly what we're seeing, but basically in the future. Now, if you want to learn more about uh, cosmic background radiation or actual effects and how it might change if you move very close to the speed of light, check out some of the previous videos I made and also some of the future videos on Miller's planet from the interstellar uh, that will discuss this in a little bit more detail. Like, for example, what if you were to move at a ridiculously fast speed? How would the CBR actually change? What would effect would it have on you and what effect would it have on the possible planet you're living on? So you'll discover this in the next video. And you can also check out one of the previous videos I made on the habitable planets around black holes because we can technically have a habitable planet because of the background radiation that could be blue shifted to be extremely warm. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.